My name is Calvin Amalu. Here this summer, I worked under Dave Phillips and Scott Baker, um, developing the INSAR or the data, the SAR data collection. Um, a little bit about me. I am a student in, at the University of Miami studying mechanical engineering, hopefully to graduate 2019. See? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, Python is my god. I love the mountains. Um, I work at a, a material science lab and a radio station back home, and I love bikepacking. Um, yeah, so here, here at a UNASCO, um, Scott and I investigated and tested a few tools that we'd like to implement in future um, renditions of the SAR data collection. For those that don't know what SAR is, it's a synthetic aperture radar, and it's collected from satellites orbiting the Earth, sending down um, electromagnetic waves and receiving the echo and like, trying to process all that. Um, and then the three tools I looked into a lot um, was HDF server, like a web service, GeoPackage, which is like a container to distribute data, and then also Django REST, uh, oh, the Django framework, web framework that we use for our um, currently active WinSAR portal that helps distribute and disseminate um, SAR data. Um, so in order to understand HDF server, we have to quickly talk about um, how we store SAR files. And we do that here at UNASCO using HDF5 files, which is a file format um, that pretty much is, you find a file system within a file. So like imagine you open up a Word document, instead of finding just plain text, you find another Word document or like a group of, or, or a folder of more, uh, of, of more Word documents. Um, and so there are two main elements, groups and data sets, that you find within an HDF5 file. Um, uh, a group is similar to like a file folder, um, where you can store more information, whether it's more um, data sets or whether it's more groups. Um, data set is where you act, the data sets are where you actually um, store all the information. So it's an array of any dimension. Um, and there's also metadata that you can attach to each of these objects. So like for star data, it could be something like the date the acquisition was acquired, the date the image was acquired, or like what satellite was used or what processing software was used. Um, and so HDF server is a web service that would act as an interface between the user and our database. So normally when someone queries for a, a HDF file or SAR image, um, they'll have to download the whole file. Um, the issue with that is our files range from like two to six gigabytes, and when someone wants hundreds of these files, that's a, that's a real problem. Um, and this service was built to interact specifically with HDF files, right? So that means that when someone wants for example, that first data set in that figure, rather than having to download that whole six gigabyte file, they can query for that individual data set, maybe even a subset of that data set. Um, and that's really promising. Um, unfortunately, we didn't actually implement this because there were issues associated with how, how, how this has to work, and I can explain that real quick. Um, so each one of these objects, the root group, the group, and data sets, in order to interact on a web platform, you need a URL for each one of these objects, right? So you're querying, you're, you're putting that URL into your, to your browser or into your query, and you're, you're acquiring that object. An issue with that is the, the service doesn't actually store that information. So you need a database that will hold all the information for you. And if the objective is to like simplify our system and um, reduce redundancy and all that stuff, that's not really a, a, a possibility. I think in the future, the HDF group is doing a lot of development in this, in this project, so we might be able to implement it um, later on. OK, so next up, I. Uh, <laughs> Next up, I implemented, uh, or I, I tested um, serving up satellite ephemeris using GeoPackage. Um, satellite ephemeris is the positional XYZ and velocity information of a given satellite at any given time. So if you want to know where a satellite is at a given time, you use satellite ephemeris to calculate that. Um, and that's very important for SAR data. When you're processing all this information acquired from satellites, you need to know where the satellite was when it took that image. Um, and normally, a, a user will request these, this information from the respective, the, the satellite's respective website, whether it's NASA or, or the, German, <laughs> the German ones. Um, yeah, so GeoPackage um, would act as, as, as a container for all this information. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. So what a GeoPackage is, is it's, it's, a, it's a database container that has not just your information, but also tables that coordinate that information within itself, that describe the information that you want to deliver in a geospatial manner. Um, and that requires a bunch of relationships that I tried to manually build myself. Didn't work at all. <laughs> um, so instead, we explored um, uh, an another tool called OGR to OGR, which helps with a lot of conversions. Um, and so what I just, I, I just, I just uh, parsed all this satellite data, satellite ephemeris, um, which was a task in itself that I really enjoyed. Um, and then I used this other tool, OGR to OGR, just and sent a, sim a simple command, and it did all the development for me, and it worked perfectly. So in the future, we will definitely be implementing this. Um, into our SAR database. So, that, so that imagine if you're a user, you need a, a few swaths or a few a few themes of SAR data. You can use um, 
our system and have the option to download all the ephemeris associated with it, which would be really great for our users. Um, and so finally, the past few, uh, past few weeks, I've been working on um, Django and our Windsor portal. And the goal here is to use this uh, web framework, this really comprehensive and extensive web framework, um, to do our validation for us. So when a user wants to upload a file to our archive, um, they can't just upload any file. There has to be some sort of specification that they, uh, they abide by. Um, and our objective is to have this framework do the work for us, the validation for us, rather than having like another API or another system on top of our portal that does all the checking for us. Um, and uh, additional, additionally, I, I worked on PySAR, which is um, the, university, the University of Miami um, in-star processing software, um, and made sure that they were outputting correctly um, formatted files. Um, and yeah, well, thank you so much, UNESCO. Um, thank you, Aisha, Leslie, everyone else, Dave, Scott. Um, it's been such a wonderful time here. I've learned so much. I'm a much better engineer, a much better problem solver. And I really appreciate everyone here, especially the interns and also the coffee machines. <laughs> <laughs>